Okay, we're here looking at NetLogo and I'm going to show you how you could use NetLogo to recreate the game Papers, Please. Now the reason to do this is it might be a, a fun way of passing an afternoon in lockdown, but there is a serious element. It, it is intended to get people interested in, in, in programming and it's super simple and there is some, some social science at the end as well. Now, Papers, Please was about assessing people at a passport office to see if they're allowed to come into the country. Our version here is going to be about assessing applicants to a university, because that happens to be what I know about. But you could do one with uh, assessing, I don't know, tax forms, assessing employees for a job, assessing uh, dance moves in a dance competition. I don't know. Whatever it is you know about you could take that and turn it into a Papers, Please style game, or at least think about how you could. And the thing with that logo, it's not going to look good. It's not going to look as pretty, or at least my version isn't. You, you probably could get it to look much nicer than, than, than I'm going to. But Papers, Please was known as a work of art. It was a, a beautiful uh, com computer program. It was a beautiful game. And ours isn't going to be like that, but that's not the intention. And as I say, you, you could make improvements on what I'm doing. I'm just showing you very, very simple basics to get you started with using NetLogo. Now you can download it for free. There's a link below and let's get started. So when you open it, you will have this black screen, black uh, window. And all I've done is added four buttons, setup and next, accept and reject, and this output box. And to do that, you go up here and select what it is you want to add. I'm going to add a button, put it there, type in a name for it. I've called it test. And there it is. It is as simple as that. And it's red until you add the code. So let's get rid of that. Hit setup. Setup doesn't do very much. You have no visible difference at all. And then I click next. And what happens is someone applies to my university. And in the output, I've got some information about them and that's where the game is going to come from. So they've got exam results. There's a four there, but we, we could we could we could do that in, an, in a number of different ways. But there's a, there's a, some sort of grading that implies how well or how badly this person did in their exams. They've got a personal statement that someone has read. And in this case, they have rated it as a one and they've got a reference from a teacher or an employer. And again, someone has read it and made a judgment and this has been judged to be zero. And then the idea is that I, or the user, the, the, the player, reads through the information and either accepts that person or rejects them. So I'm going to reject this one because they did very badly in their reference. They got a bad reference. And I immediately get another applicant who looks identical to the, the first one. So that's maybe something we would want to change in a, f in a future version. But the background went green and that tells me that that was the right decision. So let's accept this person. They've got a terrible statement, so this is probably going to be wrong. And it is. And that's it. That's the game. And you could make improvements to this to make a queue of applicants. So to put the, the gamer under time pressure. And you could make it look a lot better. But essentially, that is at heart what, what Papers, Please did. That's how Papers, Please worked. So let's just step through the code. Here it is. So I've said there's there's 30 lines of code. I haven't actually counted them, but there's not much. So globals we will come back to. Let's start with turtles own. Now, the, the people that show up to apply for university are in NetLogo called turtles. We could, we could change that if we want, but we don't need to. So turtles own gives everybody that shows up three variables. And the variables are going to record a result for the exams, for their personal statement and for their reference. And you could add stuff to this. You could add a load of other different ways of assessing applicants to university. Or if, if we do the, uh, the, the, the human resource uh, version, if you were, um, uh, if you had a job as an engineer, you could have a bunch of different attributes of engineers there to, uh, to be assessed. So th those are the, the ways that the applicants are going to be assessed. Now, between to setup and end is the code that gets executed when I hit setup. 
So all my setup does, and I only use it once at the very start of the game, is clear all and reset ticks. You've got to clear all because that wipes the memory from the, the previous the previous time that this, this game was, uh, this software was used. And I've reset ticks. I don't even need that uh, here in this in this version, but that is something that you would need if you wanted to create a queue of people to, to build up time pressure on your gamer. And then to next and end is the code that's going to get executed when I hit next. And what happens there is I get a new applicant with some information. So let's just look at the code that does this. Create turtles one. So create one turtle. That's given me the, uh, the blue character in the middle of the screen. And here I'm setting their shape to be a person. And there's a bunch of different shapes within NetLogo built in. So you could have uh, different um, looks of people that, that show up. I've made their uh, size eight so that we can see them and their color blue. It doesn't really matter about the color, but I just don't want it to be red or green because then that person will mix in with the background. Now, here is the bit that creates their exam results, their statement and their reference. And this is where you might want to get a lot cleverer than I've been, but I've just set their exam result to be a random number uh, between zero and four, uh, their statement to be between zero and three, and their reference to between zero and uh, sorry, statement between zero and two, and their reference is one or zero. Um, so you, we are creating uh, random data for our applicant. That's all that that's doing, and uh, you could get a lot more sophisticated there. And then the rest of this down to here is just doing the output. So output show the word exams followed by their exam results. So the word exam appears followed by their exam results. The word statement appears followed by their statement. So the four, the zero and the zero are randomly generated. And then all I've got here, this line here is going to be the heart of this game. And this is where you would want to be be a lot more creative. But all I've done is I've added up exams and statement and reference. And if that is greater than a certain number, then the right decision is to let them into university. And if it's less than that number, then the right decision is to reject them. And the outcome is just a, a global variable, global variable up here, recording whether or not the right thing is to let them in or to reject them, so to accept or reject. Now, what you would want to do there to improve this is to add some sort of um, uh, some sort of more complicated function to to generate that decision. You would want to include some sort of probability. You could add a random number um, to to uh, to make it so that the game isn't very easy. So we could add some random numbers. Instead of just adding them, we could multiply them. We could multiply them by some random numbers. We could add in some noise. We could do a whole bunch of different things. We could maybe use the mean rather than just adding them up. Uh, we could use uh, different, different functions and we would add in more attributes as well to make this a bit more complicated. And maybe some of the attributes wouldn't even be used. So we could just uh, make it more difficult for the user to guess what the right answer would be. So that they've got some sort of judgment call that they have to make. And then the only other thing left to do is the accept or reject button. So they are identical or almost identical to accept. So if the outcome is one, then the right decision is to accept and set right. Right as another global variable that's just gonna record the number of times that I got the decision right and I could add in one to record the number of times I got it wrong. So if I get it right, so if I accept and the outcome is one, then add one to the number of times I got it right and ask the background, the patches to become green. Otherwise I got it wrong. So we ask the patches to go red and then the applicant 
I ask them to die. No, you wouldn't do that to an actual applicant, but this is just clearing them away from uh, from from this round of the game. And then clear output. All that does is get rid of the text in the output screen. And then very lastly, I'm running next again so that the game starts over. Reject is pretty much the exact same thing, except this time the right thing is um, to, to uh, if the outcome is zero. So if I hit reject and the outcome is zero, then I got it right. So add one to right and ask patches to turn green. Otherwise, I got it wrong and they turn red. Again, I ask the turtle to die. I clear the output and I hit next. And that is all there is to it. And so on and so forth. So you could, if you had an afternoon, make this a lot better. You could improve uh, the look of it. You could improve the complexity of the game. And you could even add a queue, which w would be a lot more complicated. But you could search for information on NetLogo. This will get you started and you'll be able to do that. Now, this channel is all about social science. So is there a social science element here? Well, what if we added sex to the applicants and we made it so that sex has no impact on the right decision? We could give this game to 100 people, ask them to play it for an afternoon and use that to study um, sex biases in decisions. And we could even make it so that more males apply, apply to university than females so that it's not just a 50-50. And we could use that to, to see whether or not people are, are biased in their decision making. And not just um, not just sex, we could add in race, we could add in a number of uh, attributes and, and examine for these biases. So this is a tool that could be used. Now, if you were going to do this for real, as a real study, you wouldn't use NetLogo. Ideally, you would use some sort of uh, web programming language and put this game on a website and have people play it, maybe even all over the world. There's a there's a project called The Moral Machine, and they did something like that. They asked people all over the world. They had uh, thousands, tens of thousands of respondents, and they were studying uh, how people perceive artificial intelligence. We could be studying how people make decisions on hiring people all over the world. But if you wanted to do that with the web programming language, the complexity would ramp up. So if you're a social scientist and you wanted to have some software to study this sort of thing, NetLogo would be a good enough place to start because this code is so simple. And there it is. And what you could do at the very end is show the number of times you got the right decision. Show right, I got it twice. You could improve that very easily by showing wrong as well. And there it is. Papers, please, in a nutshell, with NetLogo. If you like these videos, subscribe somewhere and I will see you again. Bye-bye.